Song of Solomon, Chapter 4, The Bridegroom Speaks. And typology, this would be Jesus Christ speaking about his church. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. Thou hast dove's eyes. And that's what she said about him back in chapter uh, 1, verse 15. So our eyes match. Thou hast dove eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from the mountains of Gilead. And I got that Genesis 31, 47. It's in the pastor land. It didn't say she was a goat. It said she had hair like a goat. The church is not a goat. And yet churches invite goats in. We're sheep. Other sheep, Jesus said in John chapter 10. Goats at, at the judgment seat, I mean, the, at, the, at the second coming of Jesus Christ, the goats are cast off into the, to hell. So there's a big difference. I have a note here that, uh, that says that the, the hair, the flocks, the goats on the, on the, on the mountain are black. They got black hair. Thy teeth are like the flock of sheep. Now the ghost and sheep is not saying you are that animal. It's liking to her. She's got dove's eyes, gray eyes. She's got black hair. You realize the Bible tells us in the Old Testament and then the book of Revelation what Jesus Christ looks like. He's not Italian. He's not American. And you realize the, what the Bible tells us what we're going to look like to Jesus, the bride. And this is also the woman. You come back over here in chapter 1. She says, look, uh, verse 6, look not upon me because I'm black. She's a black woman with black hair. This is a Gentile woman of King Solomon. We are a Gentile bride of Jesus Christ. Thy teeth are like a flock of sheep. They are even sworn. In other words, they're, they're white. They're natural. They're not crooked. Which came up from the washing, brushing your teeth, the wash, the brush. Clean, white. Where if everyone bear twins, um, they match. Nothing out of place, not crooked. And none is barren among them. There's no spaces, no holes in the mouth. The bride is perfect, and this is not the bride today. And when I mean today, I mean the, the seven churches, the seven church age periods is from Genesis, I mean from Revelation 1 to Revelation 3. That's not the church that we're talking about. This is the church after the judgment seat of Christ. Because it sure can't be the church in the light of the scene where it makes God sick. And she's naked, wretched, poor, miserable. And she's full of sin and she's filled, she's filled with the world. This is the bride after the judgment seat of Christ. When all our sins of wood, hay, and stubble have been burned in the ashes. We've been given the brand new body. This is what our brand new body is going to look like. Black hair. Try that with your typical average Baptist church. Ooh. Try that with your, your doctor of theology. Ooh. Thy lips, our lips, are like a thread of scarlet, thin. And that, that scarlet thread is symbolic because that's the scarlet thread that Rahab tied on, on the window of, of her house for the Israelites to know that's where her house was. 
And that is the scarlet thread that was, was tied upon one of the children of the twins inside the mother where he stuck his hand out first and they put a scarlet thread on his finger and then he pulled his, his hand back in and then his brother was breached. There's something all in that. What? I don't know. And thy speech is comely, it's perfect, it's right, it's without sin after the judgment seat of Christ. Thy temples are like a piece of pomegranate, and that's a reddish skin, the pulp, deep to deep red to a purple. So we're gonna have a brownish skin. Reddish brown skin, not African black skin, and not European white skin, and not uh, uh, Asianic yellow skin. We're going to have a red brown skin of the original Adam. Try that with Dr. So such and such and theology such and such. The church is not going to be American white. And the church is not going to be African black. The neck is like a tower of David, built for an armory, wherein there hanged a thousand bucklers, all shields of mighty men. Our necks will be strength, and it'll be straight, straight and strength. We're going to have a powerful neck. We're not ever going to have whiplash again. It's going to be built right. And we may be reading about what Eve was like before the fall. Possibility. Let me throw that out there, but I don't know. Thy two breasts are like two young roes, deer, that are twins, which feed among the lilies. Solomon writes in the book of Proverbs, of, of your wife, let her breast satisfy thee at all times. Listen, the women's breasts were not designed to be put on the internet and put on a on a magazine to show to people who weren't your husband. And when Solomon looks at his bride, he see, he sees there's two deers out in the field, and that's what they're, they're uniform. They're lively, and it says feed among lilies. It doesn't say the lilies. It don't say eat the lilies. That's important because let's go back to Solomon chapter one. Talking about Jesus Christ and Solomon. Chapter two, verse one. I am the rose of Sharon. I am the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valleys. That's Jesus Christ. Now, if you come over here and say she is eating the the the, the lilies, verse five, then you got the Roman Catholic Mass. You don't have the Roman Catholic mind. That defiles the scripture. You know what she's doing? She's eating, living amidst the lilies where the, where the bridegroom is. We're out in a fat pasture. Isn't that what Psalm, what, I always forget, Psalm 23? Yea, though I walk, I mean, uh, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down green pastures. That's exactly, that's exactly what we're reading now. She's amongst Jesus Christ as the spiritual of the church in Jesus Christ. She's not eating Jesus Christ. Unto daybreak. That's first advent. And the shadows flee away. I will get me to a mountain of myrrh and to the hill of frankincense. Again, that's the gifts given to the about the two-year-old baby Jesus, not the infant Jesus. There's a lot more significance of the gifts that were given to Jesus than three wise men showed up with the shepherds and the big star in the sky. Because remember, coming up in December, there's going to be the Christmas star. Get out there and look at the Christmas star. Yeah, look at out there. Look at Jupiter in the sky. Diana. According to Acts. The, the image that fell from Jupiter, great is Diana, great is Diana. Get your eyes off the Christmas star. Get your eyes off Jupiter. Get your eyes on Jesus Christ. 
Christians are posting all over fa on Facebook. Look at the Christmas star. Look at the Christmas star. <laughs> Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Tip Murray Franken says, has a great thing because it shows up at the first advent. When Jesus Christ is about two or three years old, it shows up at the with the bride and Jesus coming together. The myrrh and frankincense, and there's no mention to go. The gift to the two-year-old about Jesus, he is around two or three years old, has also a reference to which many churches and many doctors of theology, and you missed the point of the bride of Jesus Christ. Maybe they weren't giving gifts to the baby Jesus. They weren't because it wasn't a baby. Maybe they were giving gifts for the prophecy of the bride. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. That ain't the church today. The church is soiled. She's romancing with the devil. She's got Christmas trees in, in, in her congregation. She's got the, all the world is welcome to come in to join us in the congregation. The fact is, if the, if the rapture of the church were to happen during a church service, not everybody in that church service is going away. And those that remain behind are the spots. All the wood, hay, and stubble are spots. I'm going to have spots. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse. With me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Mana, from the top of Sunir and, and Hermon. This is all north. I, when we come back, we're passing mountains. To pick up Israel, the bride of God, uh, from the lion's dens and the mountains of the leopards. That, that's the Antichrist. That's the devil. Thou hast ravished my heart, my sister. That's a communion. In actuality, the first husband and wife, the first wife of Adam was his sister. God made man, and, and where did the woman come from? God made the woman. Who is their father? God. There was no mother, no belly buttons. God the father made Adam and made the woman, because she wasn't named Eve after it, and they were brothers and sisters married in the Lord. Until they had more children, and their children could marry other children. And then as you got the more population, then you could separate from, you know, many people say, you know, wasn't Adam and Eve, wasn't their children incest? Yeah. But we grew out of that. My sister, my spouse. But then again, there's that relationship of a man and woman that is close like a like a brother and sister. My spouse, thou hast ravished my heart with one of thy eyes and one chain of thy neck. And that chain of neck back then was authority. Daniel got a chain. Joseph got a chain. Not everybody went to to the to the department store and bought themselves a gold chain or even a you know, 14 karat gold. They didn't buy that. It was something special. Everything about this is something special. The hair is a flock of goats, not, not just goats filthy and, and un, no, they were proper goats. How fair is thy love, my sister? I got a math, Matthew 22, 37. My spouse. How much better is thy love than wine? We saw that in chapter 1. Chapter 2, verse 
chapter 1, verse 2, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. So what the bride says about the groom is equal to what the groom says about the bride. We've got an equal passion of each other. We're not going to be at odds. We're not going to fight over Easter and Christmas one day because those pagan holidays of the devil and of the wickedness will be gone. And we'll be of that unity together without sin. We won't have any more independent Baptist churches anymore. We won't be independent. We'll be in unity with our, with our groom, Jesus Christ. And the smell of thy ointments than all spices, all spices. He's sweetly savored when he smells his bride. We smell good. Man, we don't smell good in Revelation chapter three. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse, much better than love than wine, the smell of thy ointments than all spices, thy lips. Now, we already read about the lips being as a scarlet thread. Thy lips, my spouse, drop as honeycomb, a natural sweetener. Honey. Honey is natural. And milk are under thy tongue. Milk is a calcium. Milk is from the human body. Milk is a nourishment. Under thy tongue. That ain't our tongue today. You realize all the things that the church speaks today? You realize that the church, yeah, we go out and tell people about Jesus. But you realize our mouth turns people away from Jesus? Our mouth insults others. Our mouth offends others. And the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. And Lebanon seems to be the, th the theme of this. A garden encloses my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up and a fountain sealed. So here's a garden. Man, this takes us all the way back to the garden. There's a, there was a river in the garden. We are a garden to the Lord that is fenced in. It has its own water source. And we just produce life. And we're, we're, we're a sweet smell, we're a sweet savior, we're a sweet beauty, we're natural. You know, that wasn't Adam. Adam came from a dirt pile. The woman came from the ribs. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranate. And pleasant fruit, here's the fruit. And we're supposed to have good fruit, not evil fruit. We're supposed to be fruit-bearing people of God through God, Jesus Christ. That if a Christian has not bear fruit, you're not part of the vine. We've been grafted in, the Bible says, us Gentiles into that vine. And we've been grafted in to bear fruit. We're to go out and plant and water, and God gives an increase. And when God gives an increase, if we planted or we watered, that fruit is accounted to us. A Christian that does not have any fruit at all may not be a Christian. Wow, that's a hard thing to say. It's a true thing to be said. I hear people all the time, oh, I'm good. What? The Bible says there's none good. I let my light shine. Well, do you witness to what? I let my light shine. How many people have gotten saved by your light shine? Uh, no. Yeah, you've been taught something out of a pulpit somewhere that has nothing to do with the Bible. And don't be surprised if I treat you as unsaved and witness to you as being unsaved. Campfire and spicknar, that's the spices. The Holy Spirit has nine fruit for the bride. You don't show at least a little bit, tad bit of the fruit of the Spirit, never fruit. It's always singular, of the nine fruit of the Spirit. If you don't show any of that fruit of the Holy Spirit, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. 
And the fruit of the Spirit, we are in the garden of God with the water of life that, that feeds us, that is Jesus Christ. That there's only one door, to, door into that garden, and that is Jesus Christ. Listen, I ain't, when it comes to salvation, yeah, salvation is simple. But we can't make it overly simple. And we can't make it overly hard. Here's a garden that has fruit and the Holy Spirit has fruit. What are you going to do with that when somebody just said this prayer? And they don't do nothing. They don't come back to church and they don't do nothing for the Lord. Are they saved? That's between them and God, but... I don't know. I'm old time Methodist. If you don't show it, you don't have it. If you don't have a testimony of a salvation, I mean, if you can't go into your house and show me the paperwork that you own that car, you can't show me a title or the loan or mortgage agreement of that car, I, I, how am I supposed to believe you have the car? It's your car. If the cops pull up to your driveway and they look at your car and say, uh, we have a car that's been reported to be stolen. Well, that's my car. Well, show us the loan agreement or show us the title. Because you don't get the title until you pay off the loan and you got the loan payment you can't produce a loan payment or you can't produce the title. You can't produce that fruit of the spirit. Now listen, again, I'm old time Protestant. I mean, I'm not old time Methodist. James says, you know, I mean, the Bible says we're not saved by, we're not saved by work, but faith without works is dead. We're not dead, we're living. Spicknar and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, and all trees of frankincense and myrrh, there it is again, and aloes with cheese spices. And you see what Jesus says about his bride? Solomon says to his bride, you're just a lovely spice garden. And there was a king in the Bible that had a, that his wife had a man murdered Naboth because he wanted a spice garden next to his palace. And that woman who's the who's the wife of that king is mentioned in Revelation. Jezebel. There's something to that too. What is it, Stalin? I don't know. I don't have all the answers. Man, you call me to be your pastor of your church. You call me to be the preaching of your church. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't know it all. Now, I'm going to, now we read it, didn't we? I, I know pastors and preachers. They would they they would skip this section. I know I know a pastor that skipped Jeremiah chapter ten because he had a Christmas tree right there on top of the piano. We can't do the we can't do Jeremiah chapter ten because then you're going to see the Christmas tree on my piano. And we went right from Jeremiah nine right to Jeremiah eleven. Be weary when the pastors skip passages of the Bible. We're going to study the Bible through. Man, we missed so much. What? Well, you know. Okay. I think the Bible says by every word of God. A lot of churches don't do every word of God. A fountain of gardens, plural. A well of living waters, that's Jesus Christ. And the stream from Lebanon. Now the bride, the bride's going to speak. Awake, O north wind. North is where Jesus is. It's where God is. And come thou south. Blow upon my garden. That the spices thereof may flow out. Go in all the world. And preach the gospel. Go out in the world. and Don't let your light shine. Let the perfume. Of the fruit of the spirit. And Jesus said to that. 
Go in the world and preach the gospel. And when you go in the world and preach the gospel, you better have love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, all the fruit. You better have all that. You better be a clean when you go out there telling people about Jesus. Let my beloved Jesus come into his garden. He's away right now. And eat of his pleasant fruits. We're supposed to be, pro we're supposed to be producing them fruit. A Christian is a bare fruit. And when the, when the rapture happens, that fruit is supposed to be enjoyed by Jesus Christ. What's going to happen when a Christian shows up before Jesus Christ and he has no fruit at all of souls? And it's never planted, it's never sold, it's never watered. Tell you, that's not right. 